The original home on this property was a dark, cramped warren of rooms in a Spanish style. That was until Michael caught sight of it. As CEO of a construction project management company who specialize in luxury developments, he had the vision to open it to these magnificent Dolphin Coast surrounds. Mike, you're clearly a man with vision, but how were you able to realize this beautiful dream? I started with a dream as a child um, to do something extraordinary, something unique. Building a house over five years, I think, is the most extraordinary thing that I've even done myself. And I think that I'll never ever repeat such a, such a thing. But I must say, it turned out to be one of the best properties, one of the best real estates uh, in Durban and hopefully around South Africa. And we're loving it. When you started building this home, you were a bachelor, but now you're a family man. I think the best thing that ever happened to me, starting as a bachelor, gave me the opportunity to be able to think in my own space, in my own time. And yes, I always knew that one day I'm going to have a family. And I knew how many kids I'm going to have. <laughs> And hence, you got these big open spaces for us to enjoy, for us to spend more time in. And yes, I must say, the, the family in it makes it just more of a home rather than a house. The pool house is an entertainer's dream, a lounge, dining area and bar, with a game zone and gym downstairs. All set in this indigenous garden and designed by architects Prakasin Govinda and Craig Atkins. Gentlemen, congratulations on a fantastic feat. This home is absolutely exquisite. And from what I understand, this home actually developed from quite an evolutionary process. Yeah, the original house was a Spanish style house. It was built over two properties. And one of the biggest design uh, generators was when we took the driveway that came wrapped around from the top of the road all the way to the bottom and we re-sighted that driveway and it unlocked the potential of having this magnificent gazebo with swimming pool area that we've been able to create as a result of that design challenge that unlocked itself into a design solution that we find ourselves here. It was quite a challenge because one of the reasons why Michael was building the house was a surprise for his now wife and we were not able to ask her vital questions to try and understand what her requirements would be for the house and we had to therefore pull a lot of the answers of Michael and ask a lot of different kinds of questions than what we would usually do to a client to get the right answers. Interior designer Grant Webster created a one-of-a-kind spiral stairwell clad in varying stains of wood with cork on surrounding walls to still the echo. It's a marvel. This looks like a perfect home for entertaining. Yeah, this is what this house is all about. It, it, it's an entertaining space. It doesn't have a lot of individual rooms in the public areas. Really one huge big volume space like this. Lounge entertainment on that side, dining room on this side, and a lot of little sort of casual grouping areas around the home. Obviously you have the double volume ceiling and then this beautiful light feature that just kind of levels it out nicely. Yeah, this, this thing was, was quite a concern because we've never used a light fitting this big before uh, in a home like this. It's called amoeba because the way that it kind of clicks together and it grows. It's really different to everything else that's in this home, so it's part of the eclecticism of the whole project. I'm kind of seeing a lot of artwork around as well. Is that the main man right there? That is one of the most amazing pieces of art I've ever put into a home. But yes, art was very important in this project. We chose the art right at the end. We had a curator assist us in choosing the right pieces of art. It's not just flashy art or art that suits an interior. For me, this, the art is, is part of the home. Michael and the interiors team mostly chose sculptures and paintings unique to South Africa and to specific artists. Part of the, 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 the beauty of this home is being able to take the inside, outside, almost exactly the size spaces, and we utilized it by creating an outdoors uh, seating area. The side it's mirrored with two matching dining rooms. Automated sliding doors provide an open connection between the outside and the masculine decor inside. And then there's the eight-seater Art Deco home cinema. Grant, as an actor, this is always one of my favorite places in the home. It's the quiet space in the house. The marble gives way to a a really dark black customized carpet and really rich furnishings in here. You might notice on the walls, this is a sort of uh, glass beaded wallpaper. These are the most comfortable home cinema seats. Um, all of them are reclining. The first floor of the house is focused around a pyjama lounge that overlooks the main double volume living room. Three of the home's seven bedroom suites are on this level and it's luxury all the way. So this is the living room. This is the living room. There's the family upstairs lounge. This is where all of the bedrooms lead on to. On this side here is what I call my favorite room. Um, we use this room 
if I ever get thrown out of my own home and I have to go and stay with a client for a while. I can understand why this is one of your favorite rooms. I don't know if it's your favorite room because of the view or just because of the simplistic sort of design. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of both. You know, the view, it, it's the piece of the view. Also, the finishes in here, they're very honest, they're authentic. The colors are muted. There's no pure, strong color in here. Other than that, here's a, a beautiful, simple, basic, very low down chaise. Just relaxing, reading a book. Let's see if this is as comfortable as you say it is. Oh, oh yes, I could lie here the whole day. Think I can? No, sorry. Place okay, to fine. Go. Fine. Be a sport, a sport. <laughs> Come, next room. There we go. This guest suite uses more exuberant colors, textures, and artwork, while Michael and Marsha's three year old daughter has an impressive suite of her own. Anyone who wants to find dad knows where to look. We've made it to the top floor, and this looks like a room where all the important decisions get made. Yep, this is Michael's seat of power. This is his study. This room can shut off completely from the rest of the house as well. There are these French shutters and we can close the whole thing off. And we wanted to make a very personal, very peaceful space. And what a great face to be inspired by when you're making those kinds of decisions. Yep, these Tay dolls of the great Nelson Mandela are quite unusual and just in keeping with where Michael needs to be. Now, this is the big main bedroom. Um, Michael initially was going to stay downstairs and when we got to the third level and he managed to see the view, the decision was made to move up here. So a little bit more romantic in the room, a little bit less severe than downstairs. Very important, all the rooms have got an ensuite and this one in particular has a very big ensuite. It's clear from his bathroom that Michael has made his name with five-star luxury hotels and conference centers. There's a sense of scale in every fixture, though it still feels personal. Tell me about the textures and fabrics in this room. What we tried to do here was make the view important. Um, we didn't fill the room with a lot of stuff. And the bed is facing out towards the view, the sea, the, the canopy, the lighting subdued. It's a very peaceful space. And we added in this corner here for Mike, just two chairs with a bit of contrast on it, leather on the outside, then studs, then getting softer, it goes into velvet, and then the last bit of feminine touch of pink silk cushion. We can't be in this beautiful room without experiencing this beautiful view. I think it's time. These Dolphin Coast views have been matched by Michael's epic architectural vision. The home is as arresting a view itself. That's why his ruse with wife Marsha was such a good one. With the grandeur of this seven-suite building, it was quite believable when Michael told her that this was a new hospitality venture. Marsha, how was Michael able to keep this the best-kept romantic secret from you? Well, I was told that we were going to a boutique hotel opening. And mind you, we get here, you walk through the door, everyone's already here, there's a red carpet outside, and you're sort of like, hmm, okay. You walk in, all eyes are on you, and they're like, oh, okay again. You walk in and your seat is right in the front. I was like, all right, please don't say it. No, no, don't, you know? And, and, and he said it, he said, this is our home, and I just could not react in any way or form. I just couldn't. I just started shaking. Were there any telltale signs that Michael was keeping a secret from me? I know him a lot for surprises. One being when we got engaged, you know, he hid a ring from me throughout our whole holiday. And it so happened that the same pants, pants that I packed, the ring was inside there. So I, I do know him for surprises. However, not this type of surprise. Michael, kudos to you. How were you able to keep the best kept romantic gesture a secret? Just keeping it a surprise and a secret for me was probably the most hardest part of my life. And I think as much as people have fallen in love with our home, I think they've also more or less fallen in love with the story and the, and the secrets. And I think uh, I love to tell the story to my kids and everyone else, you know, that everything is possible. Thank you so much for inviting me into your beautiful home and for spending the day with us. Here's to the evolution of your home, your marriage and your family. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Unlike an engagement ring, some surprises are so big you have to hide them in plain sight.